Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, no trouble. But this time, the trouble is this innocent looking little box. These little plastic wheels are the brains of an extremely important mechanism. They're called rotors. They fit into our code machines. For years, unfriendly persons have tried to break our code system, and if just one of these rotors falls into their hands, they'd be able to take all our past coded messages and find out a lot of things about us that we don't want them to know. Right now, in Venice, Italy, one of these rotors is missing. We hope it's at the bottom of a Venetian canal, or it may be in unfriendly hands, in which case I'm authorized to buy it back, no questions asked, buy it back for $50,000 in American gold. The publicity is the commissioner's brainchild. The idea is that if somebody has found the rotor, they'll know I'm bringing the gold to Venice to buy it back and contact me. With my face plastered in all the papers, I'm like a duck sitting on a rock, the target of every thief, con man, thug, and murderer in Europe. It's Tuesday when I get to Venice. I put the gold in the biggest bank I can find, but on the way to my hotel, I'm mobbed by guys trying to sell me self-scraping gondolas, three genuine Mona Lisas, and self-baiting mouse traps. And I check in at the hotel and stick around my room until nightfall, and by then I figure my picture will have gotten all the circulation it needs. Ah, Mr. Mitchell. Don't want to wake up sleeping, beauty. Uh, I'm going out for a little while. Take any messages, will you? I'll be back in about two hours. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, I have some very good business connections. May I ask what you intend to buy with the gold? You may not. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, we woke you up, huh? Isn't that a shame? I'm Anna Libertini, Mr. Mitchell. Hi, Annie. I'm a reporter. Oh. So long, Annie. Please, Mr. Mitchell, the least you can do is make a statement. <laughs> All right, I will. Let me see your card. Anna Q. Libertini. And what that Q stands for, I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> Reporter of Venice Journal. Mm -hmm. Satisfied now? No. Nope. I've got a card that says I'm a Chicago street sweeper. Wait a minute. What about that statement? You said you'd make one. Well, all right. Sit down. All the publicity about me starts and ends with that picture. Go back to sleep. Good night, Annie. Bartender, bring me one of the same, please. Mitchell, I'm Captain Sanders. Thought you'd never get here. My AGO card. <laughs> you know, everybody's been showing me cards tonight. <laughs> Where's your uniform? It's too risky. We don't want anybody to know that your gold is connected with our branch of the service. That's why I phoned you to meet me here. I'm security officer. How did... How did you lose the rotor? motor launcher's carrying a box of cryptographic material across the canal. The bilge water in the bottom of the boat got the bottom of the cart and went. When we picked it up to try to carry it to the shore, the thing fell out. All the stuff went to the bottom of the canal. You recovered everything, though, except for one rotor, huh? Yeah, that was at 1423. There weren't any Navy ships in the harbor, so I sent for a, a civilian diver named Frank Castrilli. Had him checked by intelligence and security? Yeah, he'd done work for us before. 1512, he went down for the first time. 1556, he recovered all the crypto. Did you check every piece as he brought it up? Yeah. This box in question, was it open or closed when he brought it up? No, it was closed. I opened it, the rotor was gone. Could uh, he have hidden the rotor on himself anywhere? No, 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 not a chance. 1633, the dredging equipment arrived. Dragged the bottom of the canal 20 feet on both sides. Filled it the residue, no rotor. Hmm. You know anything more about this uh, Castilli? Good background. 
Fifth in the Italian Army. Intelligence service. Good record. How'd he get into diving? Well, he was trying to make enough money to pay a way through architectural school. We've had him under constant surveillance, but so far nothing's turned up. Mm. Write his address down for me, will you? Yeah. I think I'd better pay a call on him in the morning. Pay the man, will you, Captain? Yeah. Drinks are on me. This works out. I'll buy the champagne. It better work out. So long. So long. How about my key? Oh, certainly, Mr. Mitchell. Here you are. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, um, this came for you yeah, 45 minutes ago. For me? Oh. Who brought it? Some young man said it was for you from a Mr. Uh, Sanders. Uh, thank you. She phoned her editor. She was told to wait for you. Night. Mitchell, this is Sanders. I had a package delivered to your hotel. Did you get it? Yeah, the guy at the desk gave it to me. Wait a minute. What is it? I had the engineers draw up a cross section of the canal where we lost the rotor. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, there's a straight line. Looks like the street level, right? Right. And just below that, there's a wavy line. I guess that's a high tide level. About three feet below that, there's a hole. A hole? What kind of a hole? I don't know. Looks like the opening of a pipe or something. About 15 inches in diameter. Steve, that's it. That's where Castrelli hid the rotor. We were there at high tide and we didn't see it. Oh, well, let's go get it. Security guard still there? No, I pulled him off after we dredged the mud. Oh. You think Castrelli went back in the last four days sometime at low tide and... And got it. Steve, I think we're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got something. Uh... I'll call you back, Saunders, if I think of anything, huh? Good. You got too close, Buster. Who are you? A fool, Mitchell. I underrated you. But not completely. Reary, behind you, has been waiting for you for several hours. Move hmm? a muscle and you're dead. These bullets have very soft noses, my friend. They spread. When they come out, they leave big, gaping holes. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Desk, hello, desk. What's the matter? Oh, Mr. Mitchell's phone must be off the hook, and he was talking on it just a minute ago in room 204. So he's back. Well, it's about time. 204. My editor said get a story, and that's just what I'm going oh, to no, do. Oh, no, no, miss. Miss, young lady. 
Now, Mitchell, tell us what you brought the gold here for and you'll not be hurt. Uh-uh. <laughs> you want to try and beat it out of me? Mr. Mitchell! Come in. Mr. Mitchell, I've been waiting. Come in. Come in. My friend and Mr. Mitchell are just having a slight disagreement. Seems Mr. Mitchell was reluctant to pay off a debt. Isn't that right, Mr. Mitchell? Or would you rather tell this newspaper woman differently? That's right, Anna. Oh, don't go. My friends were just leaving. Of course. We'll contact you later, Mr. Mitchell. I can hardly wait. Come on, Reary. What kind of a debt? I had that young fellow make a drawing for me and I haven't paid him yet. I'm a deadbeat. All right, Mr. Mitchell. What's the matter? Well, there's no use asking you any more questions. You'd only lie to me. Yes? I'm Steve Mitchell. Are you Frank Castrilli? Yes. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about that diving job you did last Wednesday. Oh, that? I've never been underwater so much in one day in my life. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Have you had your breakfast? I'm just having mine. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what's that? Uh, I'm studying architecture. It, uh, diving helps pay my tuition. Oh. Can I, uh, put this here where we can both see it? What, uh, what is that? That's the cross section of the canal where you were diving. Frank, how did that top secret box get open? As far as I know, it didn't. It was closed when I found it. That's the way I brought it up. Ask Captain Sanders. If it was closed, how did that rotor fall out? One of them was missing. Say, that does seem funny, doesn't it? Not so funny. The only way it could be missing is Someone opened the box, took the rotor out, and then closed the box again. Wait a minute. You don't think I had it? Frank, you opened that box. Where's the rotor? I didn't open any box. I want that rotor. <laughs> you, you, you must be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Look, Frank, you were an intelligence officer. You knew what that rotor was for. You knew we'd pay a great deal to get it back. So you took the rotor out, you put it in that hole. Then after the security guards were taken off, you came back at low tide and got the rotor. I do not mean to be curt, but you cannot prove a word of it. I'm not here to prove anything. I'm authorized to pay $50,000 in gold for that rotor. No questions asked. Is that clear? I think so. The gold for the rotor? No arrest. How soon can I get it? Two hours. And Mitchell. Get it alone and keep it that way. If there's anyone with you, it's all off. Afraid of witnesses, huh? I gave you my government's word we'll keep it. And while you're throwing your weight around, just think this over. If you try anything funny, I'll be after you. And I'll get you and the rotor. Really? Who are you? What do you want? To talk to you. You just had a visit from Steve Mitchell, did you not? We would like to chat about it. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know any Steve Mitchell. You don't? No. <laughs> I followed him here, my friend. He left about half an hour ago. Oh, that's enough, Larry. Use your brains, not your feet. If Signora Castrilli is smart, he will not be hurt further. Is that not fair and logical, Signor? 
What do you want? I will put it bluntly. You have something worth $50,000 in gold to the American government. What is it? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Very well. We will start at the beginning. You are Frank Castrilli. You served in intelligence in the Italian army. About a year ago, you became a diver in a local savage company, correct? <laughs> Last Wednesday, you did a special diving assignment for Captain Sanders, the American security officer, correct? <laughs> you recovered something, but did not return it to them. No, that's a lie. If it were a lie, they would not have sent Steve Mitchell to call on you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm glad you decided to cooperate. Now, what did you steal from the Americans? <laughs> I do not know its real value. It's a little wheel. <laughs> You're also studying architecture, Castrilli. That's true. Is this a sample of your work? Yes. Very good. Very good indeed. I wish I had your talent. And you say you do not know the importance of this wheel you make? It's the truth, I swear it is. <laughs> Now, you're a poor liar, Castrilli, but a very bright young man. The diagram on your drawing board is an exact replica of one of the rotors used in the American system for sending coded messages. No, no. We've tried for years to break their system, and you know it. And they offer a paltry $50,000 in gold. It's worth a hundred times that much to you. To me? That interests you? Good. We'll make a deal. Give us the rotor. Yes. Will not kill you. It's not here. I, I have to find it. Don't believe him. I do not believe him, Rary. But I do believe Steve Mitchell. If Castrilli had the rotor here, he would have taken it and the drawing. But Mitchell does not know about the drawing. Oh? Well, that is even better. That opens many interesting channels of possibility. One hour, Castrilli. Rary, remain outside the door. If you lift the receiver, attempt to use the phone, he'll open the door and kill you. <laughs> ah, Senor Castrelli. Pardon us coming back so soon, but we really had no place else to go. Now, what is this? Miss Anna Libertini, your half-sister, is she not? Now, what would you be sending her? Well, quite a reversal of form from you, senor. Very noble gesture indeed. Return the rotor and the drawing, refuse the reward, and you sleep with a clear conscience. Dear Anna, you were right. I should never have stolen the rotor. Other interests are already after it. Please give it back to Mitchell as you suggested. Sign, Frank. See, Riri, I was right. The rotor frightened him. As soon as I gave him the chance, he tried to get rid of it. Now, here's what we do. We sell the rotor to Mitchell for the gold, but we keep the drawing. Mitchell will think the incident is closed, and we will sit back and decode all American messages. Oh, Riri. No! Yeah? Mitchell, this is Ravi. I was in your room last night. I am certain you remember me. Now listen carefully. I have what you want to buy. Bring the... Wait a minute. Where's Frank Castrilli? He is no longer concerned in the matter. You will deal with us. You will do this. There is an old factory next to your hotel. The elevator man is expecting you. <laughs> you think of everything, don't you? Yes. Follow his instructions. I will contact you. How do I know that you have what I want to buy? I will read you their serial number. ASW9331, correct? 
On the nose. You will enter in exactly one hour. Alone. Mr. Mitchell, I had to come back to see you. Frank's dead. I called him on the phone and I couldn't get him, so I went over there. I'm sorry, Anna. Frank had written a note. I had to bring it to you. you, but I'd like to ask you a question. He was studying architecture, wasn't he? Yes. He had a lot of drawing boards and stuff in his apartment. Uh, did you ever notice if he ever made a drawing of that little wheel? I didn't see any. Why? Something bothers me, Anna. Something bothers me very much. Excuse me. Inside the factory basement, I'm still bothered. Worse than a dog sniffing around a poisoned bone. The thing is, why should those gents sell the rotor to me? It doesn't make sense. Why didn't they turn it over to their own country? Then, all of a sudden, it falls into place. If I'm right, I'm as safe as a general dancing with his wife. If I'm wrong, that two-legged thing floating in the canal is me, Steve Mitchell, floating face down. the box down. We will exchange the rotor for the gold. like clockwork, I examine the rotor, serial number ASW9331, okay. Rary looks at the gold, I know that's okay, and now I know that I got things figured right. I'm safe so far. The gold looks all right, Ruby. Bring it. Not so fast. What's that in your pocket? Looks like a drawing, could be of the rotor, huh? It is. But you'll never get it. So now I've got the rotor and the drawing, and Ravik has discovered that guys who play both ends against the middle usually end up on the bottom. How'd you tumble that Gastrilli had made a drawing, Steve? Oh, Ravik was too anxious to help me. His government would give anything for that rotor. It didn't make sense that they'd sell it back to me. You know, you took an awful big chance, Steve. You might have got yourself killed and got the gold stolen. <laughs> I thought of that, too. Oh, brother, if they got away with it, they'd have decoded everything we'd sent. They would have known everything about us. Mm. You know, sometimes I wish they did know more about us. Are you crazy? No. I just happen to believe that if their people knew more about our country, their leaders would have a mighty hard time stirring up trouble between us. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mm. Well, where are you off to now, to Sienna? No. She's too worked up about her brother. I got a date with you, Buster. You owe me a bottle of champagne, remember? <laughs> okay.